Now let's talk about cache performance and how we can figure it out based on how big the cache is and how much an application is missing in the cache. So in order to figure this out, we need to know a term called miss ratio. And the miss ratio is the percentage of cache misses. That is the number of times you miss in the cache divided by the total number of times you access the cache. Here's a plot of a bunch of miss ratios taken from some research we did here at Uppsala. Here's one application called LBM. And what you see here is that when LBM has a small amount of cache, here's 64 kilobytes or less, it has a miss ratio over 10%. That means more than 10% of its memory accesses miss in the cache. But as we give LBM more cache, so here it's getting more cache, its miss ratio goes down. So if LBM has 256 kilobytes of cache, its miss ratio goes down to about 6.5%. Further, if we give LBM even more cache, we give it 8 megabytes of cache, we see the miss ratio goes all the way down to 3.5%. So it goes way down. So what this tells you is it tells you this application's miss ratio depends on how much cache it gets. And that's not surprising. The more cache you give an application, the more stuff it can put in the cache, the less likely it is to miss in the cache, so the more its miss ratio goes down. Let's take a look at another application. Here's bzip2. bzip2 behaves very differently. If you give it 32 kilobytes of cache, it only has a 3% miss ratio. And if you give it 8 megabytes of cache, or even 4, it has a 0% miss ratio. So it has very different sensitivity to cache than LBM does. So what happens to the performance when the miss ratio goes down from 10.5% all the way to 3.5% over here for LBM? What's that going to do to the performance of the program? Well, it's going to make it run faster. We may not know exactly how much, but if it's hitting in the cache more often, we know all those memory instructions will run faster, so we expect the program to go a lot faster. Now we're going to talk about something called Average Memory Access Time, or AMAT. And what this is, it's the average numbers of cycles for memory access. And how do we compute that? Well, we use this formula here. So we take the percentage of hits. This is telling us how well the cache works. So the better the cache is working, the more hits you'll have, times the hit time. This tells us how fast the cache is. So if the cache takes one cycle, then this will only be one cycle. And this is sort of the part of the performance which is due to when we hit in the cache. Then we're going to add in the part of the performance due to when we miss in the cache. So the percentage of misses, well this is just 1 minus the percentage of hits. If we have 90% hits then we'll have 10% misses, times the miss time, and this is the amount of time it takes us to figure out the data is not in the cache. Usually this is about the same as the amount of time it takes us to find the data in the cache. And then we're going to add in the miss penalty, and this is the time it takes to get the data from the DRAM. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we have a hit time of one cycle, a miss time of one cycle, and a miss penalty of three cycles. And we're going to execute some instructions. So we do a memory access, and it's a hit. We do another memory access, and it's a miss. So we pay the miss time here, and then we pay the miss penalty. This is the time it takes us to go to DRAM. Then for our next memory access, maybe it's a hit, another hit, another miss, and then we pay the miss and the miss penalty. So let's go in and calculate what the average memory access time is for these instructions. So, out of the instructions we had here, we had two misses out of a total of six instructions. So that means our miss, rate, miss ratio is 33%, and our hit ratio is going to be 66%. The average memory access time is then the percentage of hits times the amount of time it takes for a hit, plus the percentage of misses times the amount of time it takes to find that it's a miss, plus the penalty for a miss. So this means it's two cycles per memory access. What the AMAT, or the average memory access time, tells us is that on average, each one of these memory accesses takes us two cycles if we have this miss ratio and this cache speed. Now let's take a look at an example of that. So let's calculate the AMAT for some different applications and different cache sizes. So here's our machine. We have 100 cycles to access DRAM and one cycle to access the cache, either a hit or a miss. We're going to look at the applications over here. So what is the AMAT for LBM? Well, here's LBM, and let's take a look at it for 256 kilobyte cache. So that's over here. So for 256 kilobyte cache, our miss ratio is about 6%, which means our hit ratio is about 94%. So now we're doing the calculation. So 94% of the time takes us one cycle, and then 6% of the time takes us one cycle to find out it's a miss, plus 100 cycles to go access the DRAM, the main memory. 
So that means it's on average going to take us seven cycles per memory access. Let's take a look at what happens when we give LBM a lot more cache. Say we're now on a machine with eight megabytes cache out here. Well, we saw before that reduces the miss ratio significantly. So now we have about a 3% miss ratio and a 97% hish ratio. We can do the calculation again, and we see it takes us four cycles per memory access, or about twice as fast. So this should be clear to you that cache size can make a huge difference in the amount of time it takes to access memory. How about another application? So let's take a look at BZIP. So what's the AMAT for BZIP with a 256 kilobyte cache? Well, we can go in here for 256 kilobytes, and we see it's using about 1.5% miss ratio, so that means 98.5% of the time we're hitting, we can do the calculation and we get 2.5 cycles for memory access. Now, let's take a look at this and let's see what happens if we do a trade-off between a small, fast cache and a large, slow cache. So here's the calculations we did before for LBM with the 256 kilobyte cache. And now let's compare it to another machine. So the first machine here has a 256 kilobyte cache. The second machine has an 8 megabyte cache. And when we have this 8 megabyte cache, it's going to be slower because it's larger. So here the first machine takes one cycle to access the cache, and the second machine takes four cycles. Let's see what the impact on performance is. So we saw before that 256 kilobytes, we have a 6% miss ratio, and at 8 megabytes, we have a 3% miss ratio. So we need to understand what's going on here. We've made the cache 16 times bigger, sorry, 16, 32 times bigger, from 256 kilobytes to 8 megabytes. We've made it four times slower, and we're going to see a miss ratio that gets cut in half, goes from 6% to 3%. How is this going to affect performance? Well, we can calculate the AMAT for LBM, and now it's going to be 97% of the time we're going to have a hit, but it's going to take us four cycles every time we have a hit. 3% of the time we're going to have a miss, but it takes us four cycles to determine we have a miss, and 100 cycles to access the memory. So what we see here is our, our result is seven cycles per memory access. So it's now the same amount of time the average memory access time for both of these, despite the fact that we have a cache that's enormously larger. So question, why is this the same amount of time, despite the fact we have a much larger cache? Well, the answer here, it's a much slower cache. So this cache takes four cycles even when it has a hit, and this cache takes one cycle even when it's a hit. And so this really hurts the average memory access time. So despite the fact the cache is a lot larger and our miss ratio is lower, just making it somewhat slower really hurts, and this is why you really want caches to be as fast as possible. So, let's take a look at how this impacts the performance of the processor, that is the number of cycles per instruction. So here's our setup. It takes us 100 cycles if we miss in the cache, and one cycle for a hit. But this one cycle for a hit is going to be part of the instruction's time. Each instruction takes one cycle. So if we have a memory instruction that's cache, and cache access isn't part of the instruction, the 3% miss ratio, and 1.33 memory accesses per instruction. So why is this 1.33? Well, we have one access to load the instruction, and then we know 33% of the instructions are loads or stores. So on average, we need 1.33 memory accesses per instruction. So what's the performance? Well, the CPI, cycles per instruction, is going to be the cycles per instruction to execute the instruction, plus the number of cycles we wait on the memory for each instruction. So let's calculate that. This is 1.0, it's how long it takes without any problems in the memory. And then on average, we have 1.33 memory accesses per instruction. On average, 3% of those are going to miss. And when they miss, they're going to cost an extra 100 cycles. So that means now we're going to spend 4.99 or 5 cycles per instruction because of the memory performance, because the memory slows us down. So 5 times slower than ideal because we have a cache that's missing. 3% of the time. So the lesson from this is caches are really important. And honestly, this is an understatement. Caches are the most important thing for good performance today. If people want to optimize their code for good performance, it's all about using the cache well.